Hello, folks. I, um, uh, should I just, I, I'm just I'm just getting the hang of this. I want to make sure that we are live on YouTube before I start speaking, or at least close enough to being live on YouTube. Yeah, now I think we are live on YouTube. Yeah. Hello, folks. Uh, good evening. Uh, as I said, we have set up a beautiful panel for uh, for our SP chain group mock interviews. Uh, many thanks to the guys who said we'll uh, come in here and, and have a conversation with, them, with an interviewing panel. It takes lots of uh, guts to say I will uh, turn up on, uh, on a live session and attend a mock interview. So many thanks to all the guys who have willingly agreed to uh, be interviewed on, on, on YouTube. Not an easy joke. I still remember the my mock interview which I had which nearly 23, 24 years ago. I remember it because it was an absolute mess. So I hope yours goes really well. I hope your real interviews go really well. We do have another panelist, Avinash. I think he's having some technical I think he will join in. I don't want to delay this. I'm going to just wait for some confirmation on YouTube saying, hey, uh, that the audio and video are working fine, that, 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 that they can all see us and hear us clearly. Once I get that on chat from somebody saying that audio and video are both working fine, then we'll start with this. Right. Abhinash has just entered. I think it would be good to, to have him as well. I think I'll make him the co-host. In the meanwhile, I'm still waiting. Uh, folks, one of the guys from 2IM, if you can see me and hear me, just, just put that in. Say so you can see the panel. It's on gallery view. We can uh, that you can hear us, hear what we are speaking. If you can give me that confirmation, that'll be brilliant. Mohit Patil, thank you very much, man. Thank you very much. Lovely, 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 lovely. Um, I'm going to just outline the format. Uh, two of us interviewing. Uh, I'm Rajesh. I work at uh, 2IM. And we have uh, Abhinash with us. Abhinash also used to work with us. Now he's a this is freelancing, doing many things. Uh, hopefully, several of them super exciting. I want to hear about that as well at some point of time. Uh, we have uh, four four students, four aspirants who are going to be interviewed. Uh, Sai Kiran, Vedant Shagarwal, Ashutosh Jan, and Sanjeev. I'm not going to give too much background. Uh, I'm going to type right in and kind of uh, assume this is a real interview setting. And so rules, uh, uh, the kind of terms of engagement, the moment we start, it's like an interview. So, so don't don't slip in and say, uh, sir, what exact? How exactly do I answer this? No, no, answer it. Then we'll see. Uh, those of you on on chat, uh, simple rule of thumb: have fun, enjoy yourself. Uh, anything in, in which says, hey, this is well done, is good. Anything which says this could have been slightly different is also good. Anything which says, oh my God, that is wrong, it's just wrong, not accepted. And so this is uh, they've said willingly that they'll come here and. Uh, uh, and then be interviewed on a panel. So it's just wonderful fun for, for a viewing audience. Uh, so let's help them out as much as possible. And then say a silent thanks that, hey, these guys are sitting there and not us. I'm very glad that I'm not being interviewed. So like, uh, there's a famous movie in uh, in Tamil, Pratirvalayana. So it's a famous saying, should I ask the questions or should you? Then the guy says, I know only to ask questions. So I'm very much in that boat. So I'm very happy to ask the question. I'm mighty glad I'm not sitting on the other end of the table. Right. Enough, uh, enough of an introduction. I just wanted to make sure that uh, the tech was working and the comments are working and uh, the, the Zoom YouTube part has no flaws. All that is done. Um, I, I'm going to start off with the first standard question, more by way of just breaking the ice, knowing the introduction, and for our audience to know about you. Okay? Uh, tell us something about yourself. And uh, start with Sai Kiran, Sai Kiran uh, then Vedansh, then Ashutosh, then Sanjeev. About minute, minute and a half. Go for it, Saikiran. Over to you. Good evening, panelists. Uh, good evening, my peers. Uh, I'm Saikiran. Uh, I'm very passionate about business development, sales, and networking. Uh, this I realized during my three years in undergraduation in Bcom Honors and post that I have worked in sales and marketing related roles only. Uh, uh, I, I really uh, tried to pursue academic excellence and I have tried to participate in extracurricular activities as well, be it theater, instrumental, uh, to have an overall well-rounded personality. I'm from a middle-class family. So the virtues of uh, honesty, integrity, uh, hard work, and dedication are deeply ingrained. In so that's, that's pretty much about me. Thank, thanks, Akiran. Over to you, Vedash. OK, good evening, panelists, and good evening, peers. So I am Vedash Agrawal, and I am currently working as an investment banking analyst at Equity Knowledge Partners. Uh, I completed my graduation. That is BCom Honors last year from Ramjas College, University of Delhi. 
right from my uh, school days i have been maintaining a good balance between my extracurricular and co curricular activities and academics as well so uh, if i talk about uh, the balance uh, i was in prominent societies during my college time that are placement self finance investment self apart from this i also won various business case competitions and finance stimulations and uh, coming to my hobbies i actually like to play poker and i also play football and basketball मुजफ्फरपुर स्मॉल टाउन इन बिहार I have done my tenth and twelfth in basic medium and both tenth GPA in tenth and eighty six percent marks in twelfth. Is it going down? Yeah, the volume did go down. I think you need to speak a little louder. Yeah, yeah sure, sure, sure. I will be a bit louder now. So, and I have done my engineering from PES University in Bangalore, and I have secured eight point two five GPA out of ten. After that, I started working in data analyst in the Ganit Business Solutions. and i have my job role limits to bi developer and mainly works in the field of making dashboards and working with the client for day to day request apart from my job and apart from studying i like reading books playing cricket and keep tab of cricket everywhere like ipl and everything that's a small thank intro you. about myself nice nice uh, thanks ashok over to you sanjeev good evening everyone i am sanjeev i hail from the place called vijayanagar in karnataka so i completed most of my schooling over here wherein i represented my school in uh, state level uh, table tennis and chess competition championships and then after that i completed my graduation from uh, rv college of engineering bangalore so i was a part of a club wherein we designed and uh, manufactured solar electric vehicles for competing in uh, competitions across various nation or uh, various uh, competitions across the nation and then after my graduation uh, i was appointed as a general engineering trainee in uh, itc Very nice. I was uh, assigned as assigned a project in the supply chain role in their uh, tobacco supply chain division, and later on I was uh, posted as a production line manager in one of their factories in Mysore. So that's about me. Over to you, Avinash. Give it a go. <laughs> uh, sure. So maybe we'll just uh, do it in the reverse order. Um, Sanjeev, could you just tell us a bit about why have you chosen to do your MBA and why this particular specialization? Uh, so, as I said, uh, when I initially joined ITC, I was given an immediate project uh, in digitalization of supply chain. So, I, uh, I handled projects in which way we uh, digitalized the freight, uh, freight operations, and also I did carried out the greenfield analysis. So, uh, after that, I was sent into a production line. so uh, in my stint i realized that managing people and managing machines which are managing machines which i learned in my uh, undergrad is completely different and managing people is far more complex than managing machines you, like i'm not underestimating the machines but uh, managing people is a different kind of thing so uh, one day you are sitting in a conference room and talking to your uh, revigo people regarding uh, negotiation regarding the road prices and the other day you are talking to your customers uh, promising them the delivery date right so it's a entire different spectrum from managing machine so uh, i felt i uh, know my instincts told me that i am better at managing people so that's why i, uh, I want to take up uh, managing role got it uh, so in itc is there no natural path where you can become like a plant manager or production manager and uh, uh, right actually i am no longer working with itc i took my job in uh, june 2022 Okay. So, uh, because uh, due to various reasons, one of the major reasons being my health, so I couldn't handle night shifts, and uh, I couldn't. As uh, I was working in agri uh, division, I couldn't handle the dust uh, because of my allergies. So I was forced to quit my job and uh, pursue this uh, free. Okay. 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 Uh, we'll come back to that. Uh, over to you, Ashish. So, uh, what specialization? Uh, why have you chosen SP Gen to do your uh, MBA? At? Again, again, not able to hear you, Ashish. Oh. No, 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 not yet. Now am I audible? Yeah, yeah. 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 
so i will like to tell like how many b schools are in india are, which are socially responsible to the society like they say they are socially re- responsible but i think the sp gen the abudaya program the social internship which we do if you see the we have like in sp gen there is a special program for women so if you see sp gen is a college sp gen is a b school which gives focus to all the diversity all the gender and it really focuses the what the need of the country is so i think when i will study in sp gen i will get to know a lot more about different cultures and different views so for that i wanted to pursue my mba in sp gen and regarding my specialization i have chosen information management in as my specialization and i have chosen this because if you have heard jeev statement also he was saying specialization so today like everyone want to go to digital and in like in finance we are going to fintech in marketing we are going to digital marketing similarly everything is going about so i think uh, doing i am doing management in information management and understanding what takes i think it will be the best path for me and i have like i have worked in this industry for past 18 months and i have loved my job so i think continuing this will be great okay if you are so socially conscious so how, how have you what have you done in the last 18 months uh, that kind of reflects your interest in the society do you uh, do some part time job with an ngo uh, how have you just contributed to the the entire cause that you spoke about right in your own individual capacity so far hey again it's not audible sorry I think you might have to pull up the mic. I'm not sure what is the reason. Now am I audible? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, it's like bit off his laptop, so it's bit hazy. So sorry for it. So I will tell you, like I have lagged it in my whole life. The social responsibility. I think it's something which is not in me. That's why I want to go to SP Gen to learn about it, how they are contributing, and then I will get to learn, and then I think I can be a better human being as a whole. Okay. Okay. Got it. Uh, uh, cool. Vedansh, again, you have a pretty strong background in IB, right? In fact, many of my batchmates from college wanted to get into IB. So I'm curious to know why. Why are you coming from IB into a MBA track? Uh, so, sir, uh, the main reason is that uh, currently I am working at the back end role, and uh, just for a fact, I also applied for a front end role, and I was rejected because of the reason that they hire from top B schools, and SPJMR is one of them. apart from this currently i am also in the deal origination process team which basically works on finding potential targets for merger acquisition and other things we are not actually currently focusing on valuation and other aspects of investment banking so i want to enter in particularly into valuation and other technical stuff because i believe i am good with numbers so this is the main reason i want to so if i just have to convert it into plain english you want to use spj in as a placement exchange No sir, it's not to about placement. Back end to front end. No sir, it's not just about uh, joining SPGM for uh, any job exchange, but uh, there are also certain more things like uh, as uh, Ashutosh also mentioned about different programs like uh, PG Lab, DUCC, and a Budhya program. So these things are actually important for growing or developing oneself because in today's uh, era, everyone should be ethical. Personally, I believe this, and also. uh these particular programs will help me achieve to be more socially active as well apart from this the peer learning and the pedagogy be, which is being followed the practical learnings and which is being followed through a case study and other pedagogy in spjmr will actually not only contribute uh, to my overall growth and development but will also give me a way of thinking uh, which i currently lack in my current situation because i have seen that my managers uh, in my current role are able to give a whole new perspective to a situation which i currently lack so i want to use this opportunity to develop myself and okay. contribute more we'll definitely get back to it and uh, so i can what i was curious is you clearly mentioned that you know you like business development networking and all those things yet i see that the specialization uh, you are appearing for here is finance uh, so just wanted to understand what is the specialization is it marketing 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 my specialization okay. is marketing got it uh, so could you just then let me know why do you want to do an mba because from your profile it seems like you've already done some stint in startups and stuff like that so what do you hope to gain from an mba 
okay so uh, end of first year and second year i worked uh, at a startup i joined there as an intern but i became a part of the founding team we used to provide uh, internship opportun- opportunities to high school students but after a year we faced two major problems one we were not able to uh, scale uh, scale the startup second we were not able to even reach the break even point and i think for that there is a lack of managerial expertise that i uh, you know personally faced there are certain skill gaps definitely and knowledge gap and there might be some gap that i might not be even aware of so i think mba is the means to uh, you know fill that gap to uh, bridge that gap and make me industry ready so that's why i want to pursue management okay got it yeah. so again uh, rajesh i'll just ask one more question and then you can uh, maybe take it away so uh, sai again because you are interested in marketing couple of things so could you just tell me in your terms what is the difference between sales and marketing okay so i would like to uh, uh, marketing is a, it's a more broader term okay so marketing has so we know seven p's of marketing four p's are given by mccarthy product price place promotion people process and physical evidence sales comes under pri- uh, promotion it's a, it's a one one small constitute called promotion under which sales is an important part so sales is is, is a part of marketing uh, and marketing is a more uh, umbrella term it, it involves a lot of uh, you know different thing so uh, i in philip kotler I, it's one of my favorite books that i read during my first year uh, we we come across four concepts uh, one production concept product concept selling concept and then the new age marketing concept so st- the the selling concept is more uh, you know uh, towards sales so it, it is very narrow uh, it it just focuses on hard selling it focuses on you know uh, not having uh, you know not studying the consumer not uh, knowing what the market is it focuses on that so selling concept is more towards sales the marketing concept is the holistic marketing concept that came recently which involves uh, your integrated marketing your uh, performance marketing your relationship marketing and your internal marketing so sales is a very small component inside ma- under marketing but yes uh, that that's pretty much it okay can you tell me what are the different kinds of sales processes that are involved like what are the, like the four p's are there some different styles of sales the that are involved that you are know of since you have read kotler and you seem to be knowledgeable about this okay uh, so it depends sir it depends so let's say for example uh, there are different levels of segmentation uh, one is uh, you know a full market coverage segmentation one is multiple market segmentation and then one is uh, individual uh, uh, kind of we, we focus on individual so sales process kind of uh, depends on these segmentation is what i have read Uh, for example uh, you know right now i uh, at ascent education we are uh, we are so our our tech provider is learnest okay so it comes under individual uh, you know individual side of things because uh, the sales it's, it's in other words personal selling easier word personal selling because uh, the product is the, the the flow and everything is modified according to the needs of the business okay so that's what learnest is doing they, they don't have a you know uh, like a very uh, broad uh selling thing like for example like bu- like byju's bds byju's bds they'll have a kind of individual kind of a situation where they understand the needs and requirements uh, of the business and then they do it and when it comes to let's say multiple market segmentation that it's, it's more of a, a mass selling that can occur so sell, it could be through distributors selling can occur through distributors instead of an individual level so it depends on the uh, you know ta- kind of target market and the kind of product and service that we are dealing in and say sell kind of differs that way so there are different types of selling so just consolidating everything individual selling selling through uh, your distribution channels selling through communication channels so these are some uh, sale uh, sale processes that are there okay cool rajesh over to you uh, rajesh inaudible uh sorry sorry yeah yeah now it's audible i think there's a lag okay uh, good guys good that you have some uh, clarity on uh, why you want to do an mba uh, i i now we've heard uh, uh, cycle and outline all kinds of things about different types of selling one type of marketing that we have had right now is uh, influencer marketing uh what is it and then what do you think of it so i'm going to start uh, with uh, which say sanjeev have you heard of influencer marketing yes absolutely yes so basically uh, companies are, are trying to reach out to the uh, end consumers or customers right so uh, influencer marketing is basically finding out the influencers uh, who have large following and then using them to propagate their uh, uh, products or ser- services 
So because the followers of the influencers are very devoted to the uh, influencers, people tend to uh, use up the products or the services offered by the company. And in turn, the company pays a commission for each time. The uh, each time the consumer uses their products via the link by the influencer. So this is one of the uh, background story of influencer marketing. And yeah, uh, there are both pros and cons to this uh, influencer marketing because people who follow influencers, uh, sometimes they tend to follow them blindly, right? Without no, having not much information. So whatever the influencers, influencers say, it's true for them. So even if the product is good or bad, uh, there is a slight uh, chance of error from the consumer side, uh, like they'll not be having the entire knowledge. So uh, basically, I think this is one of the problems in influencer marketing. For example, there are many uh, uh, trading apps, uh, forex trading apps, which are basically illegal in India and also uh, blacklisted by RBA. Some of them are OctaFX and other things. Still, many of the influencers are promoting it. So I think that's one of the uh, uh, dark horse, black uh, matter in the influencer marketing segment. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, anyone else wants to jump in? Just... Sir, sir, may I? Yeah, go for it. Like. Yeah. So, sir, influencer marketing is, you know, uh, so let's focus on the word influence. So, uh, so, there are certain personalities who have a certain audience that follow them, that look up to them, maybe inspired by them. So, what companies do is they use these influencers to promote or service. It could be, you know, they could be someone with a good amount of fan following in different social media accounts like YouTube, uh, Instagram. Uh, Twitter, it could be it could be one of them. Mostly it's Instagram and YouTube where a lot of brand uh, collaboration happens. Uh, so what, uh, and now there are small small types under this also. So uh, uh, bigger uh, you know people with bigger fan following are given br uh, brand collaboration with a fixed amount of money, but with people who have a smaller uh, collaboration, they give uh, they're given affiliate link where where they promote their product and then update link is there and they uh, they get paid a certain portion for every click through rate or every uh, sale that happens through that so that is how it is there so, so that the, the definition of influencer marketing is clear should it happen or should it not happen it should sir it should happen because uh, you know influencer marketing Obviously, yes, obviously. So, uh, you know, uh, there is no absolute yes or no to this. You know, the, obviously we have to weigh the pros and cons of both because if you can see uh, some good products are promoted, products that are actually good, they are promoted. They get to the, you know, get to people who have just have a access to an internet connection and a social media account through that, right? But when it comes to certain products, there are certain misleading products as well. As For example, you know, products that are illegal, especially the casino, online casino, uh, where money is involved. So these products are being promoted by influencers because of money, but because of unawareness of the on the part of the influencer, they promote that product. Uh, so the the bad parts are also there, but I would say it is required for the company because right now not, not many of us watch television. We are more on the OTT platform, on the social media account, and com and companies cannot function without marketing. And influencer marketing has become an important part uh, in this case. So we have to play the pros and cons, and I feel that uh, pros are much. Uh, over to you, Vedach. I understand why corporates want it, but a citizen should we really have it? Oh, uh, so yes. Really play a role. Uh, so yes. So so basically, uh, for me, I believe marketing is one of the major synergy by which a company works, right? And uh, as for different marketing techniques, like uh, the drawbacks which are being mentioned for uh, influential marketing is that certain cert certain products are being marketed which are actually not illegal which are actually not legal and good for the consumers but if we go on to other marketing techniques like say uh, e marketing seo certain optimization those products are even marketed on those particular areas as well so it's the uh, knowledge of the consumer and as a certain part as a uh, sai also mentioned about the knowledge at the end of influencer so companies have to uh, actually uh, play a actually play very strategically here and market their products because they have to earn revenue at the end of the day and they have to give back to the I'm society. Not about the, I'm not worried about the companies. Uh, as citizens, as, as society, do we need to worry about influencers? Do, the, do consumers need to be protected from influencers? Uh, so, sir, uh, personally, I feel uh, consumers are well educated about this particular thing, whether they should buy a product or not. And uh, so there's no need to worry. But yes, although... Uh, there's still a lack or there's still a gap between how a consumer should actually be, uh, spend his money wisely. So it's uh, the one thing which we can do is educate uh, citizens about 
uh, different aspects of uh, marketing and also how different techniques of marketing so that they can spend their money wisely. But I don't feel influencer marketing is bad. The pros always the cons. What are the pros? Okay, so so the pros major here. Uh, if we talk about uh, uh, influencer marketing, as I also mentioned that nowadays television is uh, television's reach has become very low. So I now I don't want to know about the pros for companies. Okay, you are just consumers. What are the pros? Uh, okay, uh, can I just take few seconds for consumers? What are the pros because of influencer marketing? What do I get as a consumer? Okay. Companies have to go to influencers. Companies will go whoever can pay, pay, pay customers. So, but is there a is there any benefit? I, I think the net benefit to consumers is a big negative. So if, if I'm worried about society, I should ban influencer market. Okay. So so yes, I would just like to divide it into particular two aspects. The first one is uh, influencer marketing is not always positive, right? So I'll just like to highlight a one incident here where Cristiano Ronaldo, or Christian Ronaldo, a famous football player, actually uh, kept the Pepsi or Coca-Cola bottle outside his reach, right? So if we talk about that, was also part of influential marketing. Also, there was also a case that the other competitor uh, paid some money to Christian Ronaldo for uh, damaging the other brand. So according to after that particular incident, the uh, 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 the sales of Coca-Cola actually reduced among football fans and as we have heard from many reports that uh, Coca-Cola and other soft drinks are harmful to health. So this way, there are certain products which actually are not preferred by influencers or any other uh, society and they actually talk about that product very openly. So it creates an awareness for the people and citizens of India. Secondly, when we come, uh, come down to lower uh, persons who have very low influence, uh, as I also mentioned about the affiliate links, right? So when we come to affiliate links, uh, Whenever a person buy using an affiliate link, that person gets some extra discount. The citizen gets an extra discount, which is not available for other marketing techniques, such as uh, I was just recently uh, browsed, uh, browsing through YouTube and I saw an influential marketing of uh, double crust, churn crust, basically. And uh, there were a new brand which was being marketed to a particular audience, uh, through a particular influencer. So when I used to buy that product from Amazon, it costed me 500. But when I used to buy that product from that same affiliate link, it actually costed me 350 bucks. So it is also helping me save money. So okay. 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 Yes, sir. So adding to Vedant's point, uh, I feel apart from the discount, we uh, as consumers get aware about variety. Not every firm can, you know, uh, uh, have the budget to, uh, you know, advertise through the above the line media like TV, television, right? So we get aware, as consumers, we get aware about the variety. I, I, I would like to prefer, uh, uh, you know, my, my lower from Bummer instead of uh, Jockey. So Jockey can do an advertisement in television, but I like Bummer. And Bummer has been surviving through influencer marketing and they're doing pretty well. So I get to know about variety. I'm more aware about uh, the different products that are there in the market and I can make a better decision. So it makes us better decision maker. So again, concluding, I, I beg to differ from your point. The next net, net effect I think is positive, not negative. Okay. Okay. Sir, so, uh, if I may pitch in, uh, on the top of my head, uh, when you ask what uh, does influencer marketing has a pro over the consumer, uh, I think it's about the psychology of the consumer also. Uh, like we pay so much uh, money to award ad services online, right? For you to premium and other premium services. So uh, influencer marketing is one of the loopholes to that. So I'd much rather watch an ad from my influencer than any other com uh, normal company, right? So what I think is uh, they found another way through to present an ad to consumer and um, make them enlightened about the product. So this is how also influencer marketing can gain more uh, consumers. Okay, okay, okay. So all these influencers, when they're peddling products, you don't think there's any conflict of interest? Like Cristiano Ronaldo, and when he said, look, he kept the Coke bottle aside, he was not marketing anything, he was not paid by anybody. But if people get paid, is there not a conflict of interest? I'm influencer sorry, has your trust. If any influencer you know, if he gets paid, then they, they don't have your trust. Right? How do I know that Christian Ronaldo is keeping that aside because Coca-Cola is bad for health or because the other guy has paid him money? Uh, so, sir, uh, regarding this particular incident, uh, there was also a press, like there was a press statement where they asked Christian Ronaldo why this particular thing happened. And he frankly told them that uh, because he personally doesn't prefer Coca-Cola due to some uh, various disadvantages of Coca-Cola soft drinks. 
where Crystal Ronda does not have a relationship with either brand, either with Coca Cola or with the water brand. Yeah. Neither. But if he did have, okay. suppose he were Coca Cola's endorser, influencer, he wouldn't have done that. So once you are an influencer, but then you can't have your own opinion on everything. So is there not a conflict of interest? Suppose I suppose I say, hey, good guys, you guys should join SPGN. It's a wonderful college. Uh, I really like that. You go. And you guys say, hey, nice. Uh, two of them run by Rajesh and this. Uh, Avinash is an alumnus from SPGN. Both of them are saying good, good things. You should join. Suppose then, I, then you get to know that I've been paid bombs, tons of money, to, to, to say, hey, I'm an influencer for SPGN. Uh, sir, uh, regarding yeah, absolutely, there will be conflict of in, uh, interest, but uh, it depends on the due diligence uh, uh, of the consumer, right? The consumer has to do uh, with uh, his own research. The ability to do the due diligence. See, every ad that comes on TV has to be verified. If an ad is misleading, you can file a consumer complaint. Yeah, there's no consumer protection against influencers. Influencers, if you have to put an ad on mutual funds. Then you have to say hundred disclaimers. If you, yeah, I don't know if you've yes. heard mutual funds ad. Mutual funds yeah. are subject to very yeah. quickly somebody reads out a disclaimer. Right? So if you pedal a, a tablet, it has to have approval from the authorities. But influencers can talk about stocks, can talk about mutual funds, can talk about tablets, nutrition supplements, all kinds of nonsense. Sir, regarding this uh... authorities where they are very good at because nobody can verify what they are saying. Sir, regarding I have one of, uh, one of the issue which has recently come up. So Sabi has mandated it that for any of the influencers who have more than 100k follow, I, I don't know if it's 10,000 or 100,000. So if they have more than 100,000 followers, they'll have to have Sabi registered uh, affiliation in order to promote the any uh, uh, mutual funds or stocks or anything. So this is one of the steps taken by uh, Sabi to control influencer influencer marketing in India. Uh, I would also like to add something. Regulation, it's all right. Uh, yeah. So do you guys follow any regular any influencers? Uh, yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yes, you do. Obviously. Have you bought any product based on what an influencer has said? Yes, I have. Yes. yes. Okay. Nice. Nice. Uh, no. What do you have in Ashwin? Cool. So while we are uh... At it in the first round itself, right? Uh, so Ashutosh, I have not heard much from you. Uh, so if you could just jump in and uh, since we are on a on some more yeah. etc., uh, I would just like to know your yeah opinion. yeah I would like to add a point here is that marketing is not about directly related to your sales. It's about you want to give the information of that product. This product exists. These are these features, and this is the feature which is in the market about the user to do their due diligence and regarding that they can do wrong things so in like when the ad come on tv then also i think different superstars do add of tobacco so it is not wrong if it is not wrong at that first place then i don't think influencer marketing is wrong at that place influencer marketing is all about selling your information about that product so i guess this is i take on it so there is no ethical dilemma. There should definitely be a regulation, but I don't think there is anything wrong in it. Okay, got it. Um, so Vedans, just some uh, let's. Rajesh, what is the time plan? When should we close the round one and move on to round? I, 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 that's up to us. I think we can stop round one now, give some feedback, and then move the round. Okay, maybe we can do that then. So I think round one feedback, I'll again tell, uh, maybe try to go a little bit specific and then Rajesh, you can also add. So for Sai, I felt your tell me about yourself did not have much things at all as a hook. Uh, there was not, nothing, it was just plain vanilla. Okay, I'm interested in this. I, I this, uh, There was nothing that I could really ask or, uh, you know, stood out that was interesting. Uh, so just it was too short also maybe you'll have the cushion of at least another five to eight seconds uh, so please try to make it interesting and give like few hooks that that the interviewer can kind of pick on uh, I think that's kind of important I think the YMBA answer was uh, pretty decent I would say uh, for you again Rajesh you can just add on and then we can move person by person 
I, I thought your uh, your questions on why do you want to do this uh, on on marketing and sales they got too academic. Uh, they got too detail driven based on this four piece are there, seven sixes are there, seven of seven piece are there, extensions are there. Uh, your an answer on sales and marketing has to be more succinct. Uh, you, if you've got a handle on this, you've got to go get to the point. I think it it, it the build up was too broad. You can say the problem I think, and this also I think applies to. Two, three more of you guys. I think uh, you may you run the risk of running the interest of the panel. You have to get to the point. You can hold their attention for this long. So you need to frame your answers in a way where you give the crux of it and then elaborate it and and, and showcase your personality. Uh, right now, I think you guys are giving answers by elaborating points uh, and not 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 highlighting the top thing, building on it. So it's not uh, it's not like you have a complete handle on it and you're meandering off to your answer. I think you need to do. Some more uh, rejigging for tell me about yourself and why do you want to do an MBA. I, want to, I would want the answer to be more to the point and then slightly more building out from there rather than look, this is my life story, this I've done, this I've done, this I've done. And then, and then at the end of it, I feel like, look, what is the long story short version of this? So it has to, you have to get to the point sooner, quicker. It has to be more of a well prepared answer. Get to that. And then elaborate if you find the need. And as Avinash said, give give some hooks for them to ask questions. Right now, I thought the answers were uh, not just broad based, but little meandering. Yeah. Uh, so again, a couple of more points on that 4P, all those things. It seems like a very news bulletin, bookish kind of thing that somehow I have to show that I have read this. Right? All that does not sell because everybody can buy heart and just tell something it does not it neither shows knowledge nor intellect nor in maybe some bit of interest maybe right it's better to take some example and then answer it in a, in a very simple terms they will not be very uh, you know uh, impressed with uh, like this will sell with people who don't know anything at all for the professors this will be like another uh, mundane stuff there is nothing interesting here some guy has read wikipedia page and he's just coming and talking here. So that is just try to make it a little bit more, uh, you know, your viewpoint, maybe with an example, what is marketing? What is sales? How did, you know, what are the different things that we did in 5 or 2 AM or as and which I consider as marketing, which were sales and all. And that is one way. So the easiest answer is marketing is pull based sales is push based. And then you go from there, right. From some point. So that is one second is even on the influencer question, right. Adding on to what Rajesh told this applies to others also, but mainly to Sai. when you come in with a follow up point, right. I think Vedansh or Sanjeev started it first. When you're coming with the next influencer point, it should have uh, something new or extra. You went on to again, define what influencer marketing is right. That is not required. It was again, like a, almost like a Wikipedia page, first paragraph very generic uh, or you know like now off late the trend is chat gpt so it's kind of like a chat gpt answer right it, it needs to be your viewpoint and what you need to add just talking and frequency does not get points in simple terms the quality of insights is also important so i think with that uh, of course we are being overly critical here because that's what kind of helps so guys take that with a pinch of salt we are not going ahead but dressing telling the day hey, you guys all did well and we have skipped all that part. So directly to this, we are just going. Okay. Uh, so that's great. So uh, Vedansh, I think again, Rajesh, I'll start. You can add your YMBA answer is it's brutally weak. Okay. Once you tell, I want to go from back into front end, it is almost like I'm coming for a placement exchange. And then I'll feel hurt as a, a professor because I, I'm thinking that, you know, I'm adding a lot of knowledge, packaging multiple things. It's like, you're giving that, hey, I pay 16 lakhs or whatever the fees is, and then I get a shot to be a front end IB guy. Right. Mm -hmm. So you need, and after I asked, you cannot adjust, it will just not sell. Because they will start pressing more on the questions of, hey, have you done CFA? What all have you taken steps for it? I know so many CFAs who are front end IB people. Why can't you do that? Have you cleared? So it will go along that line. So just make sure that you ha first mentally have a clarity on why are you doing an MBA? Uh, it, it needs to have a bunch of things that kind of come together and uh, all these things, it can knowledge addition, peer, uh, you know, placement opportunities, bunch of the salary. I mean, like salary up leveling, all of these things, 
play a part and all of that has to be packaged in your answer okay just okay, to be more otherwise... finesse in what you're saying yeah. sorry go ahead okay. just be more finesse in what you're saying if you, you can say look i've seen what the front end guys do i feel like i have the i can add the ability to do that even that is all right but saying i'm in the back end i want to go to the front end and, and leaving it at that or leaving it focused on just that one point uh, can backfire you can make it anecdotal so i work with my boss uh, and the, the people i work with their understanding of the financial market of valuation is rather good uh, it makes me eager to, to to add that skill set to learn more about that to understand finance from basics that i get that will be interesting I okay. think you touched upon the boss point, but for the wrong reason. It was not for the knowledge at all. It was more like the interview I cannot get through because they rejected my CV, <laughs> right? That I don't have an MBA. It may be true or it may not be true. I'm not counter. I mean, like uh, talking about that and all. But this answer, just from a selling point of view, it may not uh, be an easy sell. Okay. And also do a lot of research on how many front end roles actually come to colleges. Uh, you may be disappointed. just for your own this thing as well just take the placement report talk to few alums and stuff like that i don't know how many roles are available and all those things just look at that just sure. yeah uh, uh cool i think next i'll move to ashutosh ashutosh uh, it's almost the opposite feedback of what i had for sai kiran you need to balance some amount of frequency right when all the others are participating definitely the panel will not ask you and they will forget you and your actually point was yeah. very good final final point on influencer thing uh, was rather correct correct yeah and i thought you were the one who could draw on examples and and outline that key point like brand ambassadors are doing it why can't influencers do it i don't find anything wrong with this it is up for consumers to be discerning is right and that's a crux of what all these guys were trying to do and they were not getting to the point and in about 15 20 seconds you summarized it rather well if it had been the beginning of discussion would have ended that question and gone to something else so you had something very meaningful to say and you were sitting over oh dear right. back to you sorry tech is yeah, not so. working so that's why some okay. have come uh, great ashutosh so i i think that and but your that entire your story about tell me about yourself and why mba also has to be rock solid i think there is much more scope and like uh, again uh, maybe i am wrong but or it's the mic issue i feel there is a little bit of confidence issue or some nervousness when you are talking so if the easiest way to correct that is write down the answers and give, give as many mocks as you can when do you have your interviews uh, next friday 27th ah uh, so you have enough time so just take the next 2 3 days prepare those answers and start giving mocks because your points are very good if you can boost up your confidence you will, i think you can do really well but that will not come without mocks that much i can guarantee nobody can just walk in and talk in terms of phrasing you said how many schools talk about social responsibility only sp jain does it's, 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 uh, what everybody talks about it but they actually don't do anything and so you're actually landing a blow on some other college uh, for for no good reason i think you should you should phrase it and say look the idea that sp jain cares about social responsibility that appeals to me i think that that is an extra plus that sp jain has over all other colleges and that appeals to me don't land a blow on on some other college it's almost like how many colleges actually do social responsibility thing they talk about it but they don't do anything Don't do that. Don't go and 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 say decrying something else. It's not necessary. I uh, some some it is just uh, needlessly contradictory. For some 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 imaginary folk, you talk about why you like S P J. So look, uh, that's fantastic college. It's in the top ten. It's an easy decision for me to make. Uh, one extra thing that I really like is hey, you had a you had a bit about social responsibility. Uh, and that I really like. That I really appreciate. That's what draws me to it. That one extra bit. That's fine. that goes well uh, yeah ashutosh just on that right i i would say that your uh, the entire social answer is again very weak i would say uh because that again seems like i've gone through the website i have picked up the three key points that seems to be different here and then just let me tell that the problem with this approach is just think you, this is not the first interview that the professor is taking in their life this is probably the 25th or 20th interview every year students are doing the same thing you will not be the unique even in your six people they, they would have seen 10000 maybe students who have given similar kind of answer so it will not cut you will not be the only one who knows about doc abhyudaya and everything and it, it actually 
irritates them very much that if you tell something and especially when i ask a question that hey what have you done for the social thing and all and you tell that hey i have not done anything i want to learn it is very apparent that it, you don't you are not really concerned about that and that is not wrong and all but being socially conscious cannot be your reason why you are choosing spj at least from the story that you have told so just figure out maybe something else better that why you can go for it that key this, because this is not the google kind of matching where you can fill three keywords and then you know it will get filtered and through so just be clear about it and you, there are obviously bunch of other reasons why you would want to go for spj and try to think of that i i would say you don't want the social question to be asked to you okay uh cool sanjeev uh, i think it was okay i don't have any particular feedback rajesh you can just add okay okay, okay. i thought uh, it, it was more uh, an overall feedback i think uh, the both answers why do you want to an mba and tell me about yourself for all four of you it needs to amp up a little bit for for saikiran it needs to get to the point quicker uh for 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 vedant i think you need to uh, just make that distinction between front end back end and that investment banking thing better uh ashutosh work on how you are delivering it that that's probably going to be the uh, the key point uh sanjeev i think i thought i written down something let me just think so somebody who said i currently lack these things so who said that uh, i think it was vedant uh don't, don't say that you mentioned it twice thrice over i currently lack this i currently lack this i want to do this i want to add this you don't lack anything you're adding something so, so keep that in mind um the, uh, the i think your, your discussion on oh sorry sorry rajesh sanjeev just had one specific thing again in your tell me about yourself and everything right sanjeev and even your ymba it's interconnected the itc story does not come across clearly at all right and i think either you skirted around the topic that hey I, i left itc some time back and then what you are doing now that should have either been part of the tell me about yourself okay fine if it's not there that is fine when you ask it also what have you done what exactly were the issues that you faced and again the transition to why do you want to step up to an mba is not like fully clear because i again i did not press too hard on it all but you have some you have gone on for some solar competitions and stuff like that suddenly yeah. you are telling you are making the jump that hey i want to do i i am good with people and stuff like that is what you are realizing yeah. the question could be why don't you just continue on the same experience right is experience the best way to gain people management skills or going to an mba the best way to learn people management skills right so again fundamentally guys i don't know whether all of you are understanding what does an mba give and whether you are packaging all that together it's not like you just come in and then out of a machine you go out and you will become a manager or something like that you placement you will do that but skill wise whether you will do that or not and all is questionable so just understand what an mba will give as a overall package and bring it in i feel that is lacking uh, including for you sanjeev because it could go on the, down that line right if you just tell i'm good with people or i want to improve that there are plenty other ways to do it right yeah, you left yeah. itc why don't you join another job where you can do no nowadays it's not like mba is mandatory to become a people leader right in any company so what is mba going to really give us something that you need to be clear on and the transition from itc to that gap to mba to what you want to be needs to be clear sure your itc story feels slightly incomplete also because you have you have transitioned because of health issues and and, and and the allergy so it feels like hey uh, there's no like he said there's no transition from one thing to another because that thing is stopped what could have been a natural progress when, when avinash said why did you carry on and become a plant manager in itc round about that time is when you said look uh, i i'm not actually in the plant because of health issues i had to transition so it looked almost like i suppressed this but now that it has come out i might as well mention it which makes your why mba story also weak so uh, try to be like like avinash has set the tone very well saying look i'm going to give clear feedback if you guys feel bad about it for a, for six four hours i'm okay with it but almost like you guys have picked up uh, from a why mba bingo card and each of you has selected one thing and so uh, saikiran has gone the book route you guys have uh, gone the uh, so ashutosh had said look social cost therefore mba therefore sp join vedant had said look uh, uh, i i i'm on this role but i want that role from front end to back end this is a transition i want to make 
Uh, and, and Sanjeev said, look, I'm in a factory. I want to do operations. I see how it is working. And therefore, I want to do this. Okay, why don't you continue with the factory? No, no, I'm not really with the factory. And so it all, it, it's not just a fact that you don't have clear answers, the way you're articulating them. It is, it is also the fact that I don't think you guys are clear about why you want to do an MBA. I think mean, that's the point Avinash also repeatedly makes. You don't have a, a clear enough idea of what an MBA can give you. So, so think about it. Take half a day off, one day off. Think about, hey, what is it that it can be a uh, like a medley of factor. It can be a bunch of things put together. I, say, I see an example. I see what has happened. I like the idea of running a company. I see the challenge of taking care of multiple things and not focusing on one thing. Uh, you can either example led or particular personal life led or a, a combination of factors put together. You can you can create that answer after you have clarity in your head. Like you said, upselling, getting paid more, up, 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 leveling up in terms of what you get paid, in terms of career transition, all of those could play a role. And you can be very honest about it. Say, look, I like to be, get paid more. I want to grow fast in my career. MBA seems a good avenue to get there. And that's why I'm going for it. That's fine. That's fine. Uh, right now, your answers are coming out as wishy-washy way. So you have to double down on one thing and then build around that. Super, guys. Let's move on to round two. Let's just continue on with that. Over to you, Avinash. Cool. So, uh, welcome to round two, guys. Again, this is going to be like a free-for-all. Uh, so, let's just start since we have people from different backgrounds. Uh, so, we'll start with Vedansh, what was the price for which uh, Naika got listed, the market capitalization? Sorry, sir, I'm not sure. Uh, okay, guys, so this is the scenario. You know that there is a company today that, uh, uh, you know, is going to go bankrupt. Okay, let's say that the promoter comes to you uh, and all of you, I mean, like, uh, just to give a background again, just think of yourself as a salesperson for a stock. Okay. Uh, let's not keep roles and all. Let's say you're a, a salesperson for a stock. Uh, so Sai, Kiran, Sanjeev, Ashutosh, all of you can come in, even though it might not be a specialization. Let's say it's a tech company. Uh, it's going to go bankrupt. The promoter is coming to you. You are the person who kind of raises money from the market through IPOs. Okay. And he tells, Hey, the market seems to be hot like last year. Uh, let's raise funding for my company. Uh, whatever money comes, you, let's I'll give you 20%. Let's put the market cap as some 50 crores. Okay, but the company is never going to make a profit. Um, so what would be, and your boss clearly tells you that, hey, our job is to make sure that we list it. And let, just like all of you kind of alluded to it, it's buyer, uh, investor has to be aware on what needs to be done. Okay, so the boss comes to you and he places this proposition in front of you. You are going to get a hefty commission. Five crores is what your commission is going to be at the end of this project. So what would your immediate reaction be? Anybody can start. Uh, was it, was, it was audible, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You can hear yes. it. I think they're hosting it. A company yeah. that doesn't make money, once you get listed for 50 crores, you get 5 crores for helping them. What do you do? Uh, so, sir, uh, talking about it personally, I'll actually try to negotiate with my manager or the boss because I don't think this is personally very ethical to actually, uh, after knowing all the facts that company is going to be back bankrupt in next day, assuming or in the next week, so it doesn't uh, it doesn't actually become very uh, ethical for me or it won't allow with the moral principles so i won't follow this particular step okay i would also not go, go ahead and uh, i mean I'm, I'm not going to go do that probably i would somewhere in uh, <laughs> a different job but I don't think i would ever do that because i think it's very unethical as you know, agreeing with the bunch. Okay. Okay. Oh, uh, can, can I, I go, go now? Oh, okay. Go, Sanjay. Uh, so basically, I am the underwriter here, right, of the company. So uh, I am bound by bound by the rules of the organization in which I am working. So uh, if I am asked to uh, list a company in the uh, like, uh, I have to underwrite a company to be listed on the uh, stock exchange. I have to do that, right? So, because uh, all the companies which are either having a profit or loss will be listed in the company and uh, in the exchange. And we have a saying in the financial markets that caveat emptor. So, the buyer has to be aware of what he is buying actually. 
so uh, my basic job would be to uh, follow my uh, manager's order and uh, go through it got it so sanjeev just on that same proposition uh, the manager tells hey the rich guy seems to be understanding this well let's go to the poorest of the poor and sell this product so uh, i don't yeah. think uh, uh, i i don't know the situation exactly but i don't think i can compel any of the particular segment to buy my stock i can just list it on exchange no, i mean i'm just taking an other example let's say it's not a stock in this case it's an educational tech product yeah okay. then then yeah then you are basically asking me to uh, sell to the people who are not capable of paying it. correct that would be uh, outright uh, unethical because it's not a financial market and uh, it's just a product no, your itself. company has rules they in selling products also just like in the influencer marketing you all spoke about that it's the consumer has to be aware yeah right yeah what is different in this case so there's a thin line between uh, ethical and unethical and legal and illegal right so okay. uh, Uh, when i'm just uh, underwriting any uh, company uh, company valuation i can just uh, underwrite it and uh, let the buyers make the choice but when i'm selling a product i'll be uh, like uh, promoting a product to, uh, promoting the product to the cu- cu- customers so i just can't go outright and uh, sell it to the people who are not capable in this case promoting a company how does it make a difference so when i'm underwriting a st- i'm sorry yeah so just couple of things in first case also you're promoting a company first of all no i'm just under it uh, underwriting the underwriting and you're putting it out for the price let's say you're part of the selling team okay okay let's say you're part of ceo's right hand man now what do you do and i again remember you told that i will follow what the company's rules are yeah then can i go in if yeah please sir yeah, sure so i will do like as i will go with sanjeev's point let's do it uh, let's list it but mm. there is one dhrp document is there a very simple document so i will try to paste all the facts there that the company has no profits company has company is not having revenue so as a banking investment banking institute it's not my duty to see what they are doing it's my duty to paste the facts and i will do it as according their revenue as zero their profits are not going it and so i will you listen. know that they are yeah. going to go bankrupt it's not your duty to communicate that it, it's my duty i will write it whatever they their fact is like in stock market we can't say it's bankrupt it's if their profits are going down it's people's duty like that they should be doing it and people i would like to add one yeah, yeah. based on the fact that you are underwriting it yeah like i will write i will like to add one more point here just for this thing he and the people who will be putting the money here right now are not doing their due analysis and they are also speculating it so they are also doing committing they are also not doing their part so i am doing my part correctly and if people the people who are, for them who has been it's listed if they do their part correct i think the stock will flop and we can get correct result so it's like so what is your part here suppose you know that the company is going to go bankrupt trying to take them public is still your part trying to get them listed is still your part as long as you get your money that's your job as a investment banking if i am working in this investment banking firm and as a employee i part is to what they want to do and what the client is saying i will put it there but i will not do anything illegal in that like i will not do i will not tell wrong facts that this company is doing very good you should buy it or you should do it i will just paste what the facts are i will try to go with that god then you rajesh i'll just come in sorry you yeah, do yeah. that the ceo knows that hey ashutosh what nonsense to write such plain language am i paying you 5 crores i am giving you 5 crores because the deal has to go through you first of all your boss will tell dude how will this go through we are not going to make our 5 crores if people don't subscribe to it then the client will bash you that hey why have you put this that we are making loss and all it's not legal to put all these things let just put what you what the legal document says here and then let the customer take care the investors know better than you now what will you do obviously they'll say that right they're giving you five crores not to write a report saying this company won't do well uh others you can also step in 
Uh, I think this is straight up misleading. Uh, one, uh, if you have to be ethically correct, we, can't, uh, we cannot go through with this. Like not stating the obvious facts in the DRHP is uh, also not ethical to both the customers and uh, myself. So I will not go through with it. Uh, although yes, uh, and this will also violate the other legal problems like window dressing. It is a part of window dressing, stating unethical and uh, false facts, right? So first of all, uh, it won't be passed under the severe regulations only because if we are presenting it unethical or false facts. Secondly, no, it no, there's no most... false facts and all. You are just stating the obvious, but to the bare minimum, or obfuscating it with complex language. Let's say it will pass through legally. You use words like uh, network effects, random things, operating leverage and stuff like that, which nobody will get it and make the draft rendering prospect as itself 25,000 pages. This is the mandate that you have got. Nobody should be able to read it. Sir, uh, uh, there are a few accounting convictions that I've read. And uh, according to that, there's a principle called a full disclosure principle. Uh, first of all, the information must be complete, simple to understand. And in language that uh, the uh, interested parties can comprehend, so that it is we are, we are just you know a kind of uh, uh, going against that, so it's not legal, right? I will like to add point. There. Yeah, go ahead. So I will see there is a point at which you should return back. This is the point where you have to do commit wrong, and so I will not be doing it. So, like I have started my fact that I will do it. So now I'm committing back that if I have not been told that I should write correct facts, then I will be happy to leave it, I guess. So you'll just walk away from it? I will not walk away from it. I will try to influence as much I, as I can. And then it will be a manager's decision. He, If I'm not doing my job, a manager can fire me. So that will be the thing, the repercussions. Got it. But you will not walk away from a bad company. You'll wait for the manager to fire you. Just, just one second. Suppose I'm saying, uh, uh, suppose you guys individually, most all of you seem to have said, look, probably not do it. Shai Kiran and Vedachan saying, look, I will not do it. Other two of you saying, okay, if this is indeed like this, then I'll probably not do it. Then they say, hey, the manager calls you in, then calls another guy in, says, hey, calls me in. I says, dude, these four guys are they're wimping out, but I know you're not like that. Go ahead and write this report. I need these five crores. I mean, this is how the business is, this is how the world is. And I say, yeah. I'm on board and I start writing it. Will you continue with the company? And until I'm, unless I'm in the company, I will not report it to anywhere. I can't do it. And if it, I'm not in the company, then I can definitely report it. There is something called whistleblower. So you can become the whistleblower. Until unless I'm in the company, I will not report it. So that will be my stand. Okay. okay. So, so you, what about the rest of you guys? Uh, yeah, yeah, sir. Uh, yeah, you go. Okay, so, so personally, I feel this, uh, if this situation comes, I'll still try to negotiate with my manager about the case, the whole scenario. And even if needed, I'll also uh, like approach the required organizations. And even if needed, we also talked about the how uh, influence the marketing works. So I'll also try to uh, uh, actually provide some information or facts which are actually legal for me because I'll also be binded by the documents that I can't provide all the information and facts which I know during my tenure. But there are certain things which can be uh, talked about and which are not in the contracts, which are not binding me. So I'll be actually not uh, sitting back just because I want to negotiate and stop this unethical thing. So I think that's Sorry, what do you do? What is the decision you will take? Uh, so firstly, I'll try to negotiate with my manager and boss about the same scenario. Secondly, uh, I'll also... Uh, what do take... you negotiate? What do you tell them? What is it to negotiate? He's saying, Vedanch, you don't want to write the report. Rajesh will write. You can leave. You can leave the room. And the company. What do you negotiate probably. with them? What do you have to offer him? So, Rajesh is willing to do it. Vedanch is not willing to do it. Your boss is saying, okay, Vedanch, you can do Head out. I can get it done. What will you negotiate now? Okay, so sir, in case my negotiation power is gone, uh, and then most probably the case will be that he'll be firing me because I am not doing my work and other stuff. So I'll he's be. Not firing you. He's not firing you. Your boss is not firing you. Why would he fire you? You're a good employee. You're not willing to do this. Rajesh is very much willing to do this. Rajesh will do this. What will you do? 
सर एट माई पर्सनल लेवल आई यूज ऑल माई पार विच आई हैव लाइक आई बी प्रॉपरली राइटिंग टू दॉपर ऑर्गेनाइजेशन अबाउट लाइक साइक्रन ऑल्सो मैं अबाउट फुल डिस्कलोजर प्रिंसिपल सो इफ आर ट्वेंटी फाइव थाउजेंड पेजर रिपोर्ट इज बींग मेड दैट क्लियरली वाइल इज द फुल डिस्कलोजर प्रिंसिपल एंड आई एल बी राइटिंग दैट टू सेवी एंड अदर ऑर्गेनाइजेशन फॉर अप्रूवल पर्पज इन एंड आई एल बी टेकिंग माई प्रॉपर स्टेप इफ नीडेड Okay, and will you quit the organization? Uh, no, sir. I will not quit unless uh, my boss fires me. Because this, there is just one certain incident, and I still try to win the organization and look forward for other uh, good incidents. Because I have been working in that organization for a few times, so I won't leave that just because of this particular incident. Uh, can I go now? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, in such situation, if it may arise wherein I find it it's borderline illegal, right? so i'd be much more than happy to just walk out of the company because uh, i just don't want to stay in a place where there are borderline illegal stuff going on there isn't anything illegal i don't no, think that's what, it's not illegal but it's borderline illegal right because uh, you are just misled uh, if you are not stating the facts properly then it's just outright misleading the people uh, so just again sanjeev for your context think of it like uh, Uh, whatever selling cigarettes without the full disclosure only, or the reporting not happening. Yeah, it's something similar. Yeah, that's border. Uh, that's illegal, right? So, how long did you work in ITC for? Ah, uh, nineteen months. And why? Why did you walk out finally? It was for health reasons, or because you were worried by anything with respect to cigarette marketing and stuff like that. Ah, uh, health reasons. Yeah. So that time you did not follow the same thing, no? Yeah, Rajesh. Go, sorry, go ahead. Uh, do you think uh, if a company now? if a company does something wrong as an employee you will walk out ah uh, can i uh, talk now no, no yeah yeah sanjeev i'm asking a question to you if yeah, a yeah, company you're yeah. working for does something yeah. wrong will you walk out and say look i don't i no longer want to work here ah uh, yeah borderline illegal like i i will walk out but as go as as for something even has... borderline illegal suppose you think what they are doing is wrong will you walk yeah. out ah uh, yeah Selling cigarettes no. is wrong. Ah uh, no, ah uh, selling cigarettes is not wrong, but promoting cigarettes is wrong. Because ah uh, as far as Avinash's question goes, ah uh, he asked me that why I didn't quit IDC because of my moral values. Ah uh, I just want to say that ah uh, we are not in the business of promoting cigarettes. We are just in the business of producing cigarettes, right? So we are ah uh, we are ah uh, selling we are producing them just because there's a demand. If not us, if not us, then there will be hundreds of other people who will come to my my place and sell the cigarettes. so uh, i just want to state the fact that we are not promoting cigarettes and uh, and i can assure you that uh, idc is not the... marketing cigarettes because they don't want to market cigarettes but because they are banned yeah there is uh, there they are banned that's there but uh, so idc used to market cigarettes till just up before the day it got banned you know that right yeah yeah idc yeah. want to brand an entire city as will city yeah but uh, now i think uh, there is no uh, even was it a moral point. ethical stand on marketing cigarettes or just being legally binding that itc is doing uh, yeah it's both moral and legal right now, now nowadays we don't market any of our uh, uh, cigarette products and also okay. it's not legal now so, so is it because itc is been banned from marketing or is because they took a stand and say we will not promote smoking yeah uh, you could you could argue in both ways but uh, That's what argument was. No, no, that was no, no. I could argue in both sides, but that was basically because it, uh, ad ad marketing was banned of uh, cigarettes. So, no, are you saying ITC was suddenly decided we want market cigarettes, or they were told, look, dude, you can't do this, and they stopped? Ah, uh, yeah, that that's the second one. We can. Second one clearly. So yeah. they're not paragons of virtue. I'm sorry, I didn't get you. So they 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 stopped marketing because they were told you can't advertise. Yeah. Does ITC do surrogate advertising? Ah, uh, for cigarettes? Ah, uh, no. They have a brand called Will's Lifestyle. Ah, uh, yeah, that was uh, a clothing brand. It has been discontinued from twenty twenty. So there are there are three million words in English. They chose Will's for that. Yeah, that's what. Ah, uh, it was a uh, brand. Not surrogate advertising. No, it was in twenty twenty, but now it is not there. No longer there. They suspended that. Yeah, the stop. The stop. Somebody uh, complained that it was surrogate advertising. Ah, uh, that I'm not sure of. That was before I joined ITC. So, so do you think it is surrogate advertising or not? Ah, uh, I highly doubt it, because ah, uh, Wills. They chose this brand Wills because out of the out of a hat they had twenty names and Wills came up. 
Yeah, uh, actually, clothing brand. Mills Lifestyle Clothing Bag was not an original uh, product of ITC. They acquired a uh, company called Mills Lifestyle. <laughs> Which they, they, whom they asked to name it as Mills Lifestyle. Mills no, Lifestyle no, no, was started no, no. in 2003. Mills Lifestyle yeah. has been survived and existed as a brand that ITC built and fostered for 18 years. I know this because I work for Mills Lifestyle. Yeah, but uh, it acquired, right? It, uh, like, uh, ITC, it, it was all... It didn't, they, they maintained a brand called Will's Lifestyle for 18 years. Yeah. And it was called Will's for a reason. That's all right? Uh, yeah, but that's borderline illegal itself. Okay, but you're okay to work in a company that does this? Actually, I was not aware of this. Uh, I never imagined uh, Will's to be a part of this Will's. So now I'm just getting enlightened. But will you have an issue if a company does something like this? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. okay. Over to you, Agnesh. Cool. I think uh, <laughs> we have gone uh, good enough conversation. No, do you want to put one more question, or I think enough content? I, we can, we can, we can find out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's been a long session as well. <laughs> Correct. Correct. Uh, Guys, anything on? <laughs> Uh, I think Avinash phrased this rather well. Uh, can I jump in? Yeah, yeah, go ahead, Raj. On underwriting a company that is going bankrupt. I think that this is one of those questions which I thought would call for an unambiguous answer. It's not done. You won't do this. Right? So those of you are saying, I've got to do what I've got to do, you have to be very careful. At the very least, you're in an interview. There is no upside to saying, if my boss tells me, I've got to do what I've got to do. Why? It's, 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 forget the legality of it. It's unethical. Why would you want to say, under pressure, if my boss says I have to do this, I will redefine my job as saying I have to present facts and do this. You can clearly say I'm uncomfortable doing this. I'll find every reason to fight this battle. I don't think this should be done. I will fight tooth and nail with my boss to not do this. Failing that, I will say, okay, let me not do this. Why are you sticking your neck out and saying, I've got to do what I've got to do? Forget one aspect is, perhaps you should say, look, I'll not do this in your wherever you're working, at the very least, in an interview panel on, on issue of ethical dilemmas, forget about it. There's no dilemma. One thing is ethical, other is not. You always, always, 100 out of 100 times, say, I'll do the ethical thing, not the not ethical thing. It's an easy thing. There's no, there's no gray area here. And this might be a gray area when you're sitting in ITC and working in the factory, and you think that smoking causes cancer, do I really need to work in the middle of the night? You're thinking about this. Should I change a firm? Maybe there are gray areas there. Vinash is saying this company is going to go bust. You're, you're being asked to write a report. Will you write it? No, I won't. You're, you're being forced to write it. I'll fight to the name. Your boss says you write it or you leave. I'll leave. Somebody else is being asked to do what will you do. I'll see if I can change your opinion. I'll be on the lookout for a job. Easy answers. Very easy answers. There's not much of a dilemma here as much as uh, Avinash asking you to say, please tell me, I won't do this. And so, so don't, don't get, uh, the, the legality is still fine. There's a DRCP document. There is a mechanism to check this. A uh, caveat emptor, buyer beware. Investors should be savvy. Uh, rich people should know better. If they're poor, I would look out for them. No. All this, even, even when you're having a debate with friends and say, problem Why would I blame the guy who's peddling the product? The stupid, stupid guy who bought the product, he should be blamed. All those are fine. But you are in the middling, broking, underwriting job. And you're in an interview where they're throwing this ethical question. It doesn't seem right to me. I'm not doing that. And then th there comes the context where somebody will stick and twist and say, your company is doing it. Are you quitting? Are you staying there? Then it's a, it's a tougher answer. First one, not tough. At least that was my view. Over to you, Avinash. Hey, so I think better discussion definitely than the first one. So I'll again add a few pointers and then we'll go specific. Uh, so the purpose of this qu question is obviously one stating the right answer. The second thing is all of you are very focused on, hey, yes or no. Right? That is not the ideal way to kind of go about this, I would say. The thing is, you tell the answer, hey, no, I would not do it. Then talk about stuff in a matured manner of various things, right? What are the repercussions of this? Like, for example, none of you bought out, let, let's say I'm talking with my boss. One of the points that I would bring out is, hey, what will happen to the reputation of our firm if we do this? 
right we are loose just it's like uh, cutting open that uh, golden uh, that duck or something for that golden egg right it's it's like that i this this company i get 5 crore one time boss but what about the next company that we are going are the public going to take us in won't we be under sebi regulations in a worse way one point number one point number two if there are any repercussions what is going to happen to my personal brand even for example vedansh you mentioned that you know i'll write it to uh, the relevant authorities then i am thinking that hey is this guy mature enough to think that no other company is going to recruit him like if you have seen about any whistle blower do you think they get easily readily recruited for by all the firms that are telling that hey we want whistle blowers are they recruiting them so the thing is about first stating what you will do but this is not a yes or no question the thing is up after that what are all the layers you are adding layers about future prospects layer about how will i negotiate with the boss layers about you know what i will think about my own personal reputation i'm i'm just bringing what i think there could be different elements the legal risk your reputational risk the risk of business you know and nobody even brought out the points like hey in my life i feel like you know being truthful to myself is like uh, what our consciousness is the softest pillow or something anything right personally how would you feel about it nothing i heard it was all about yes i will i think x y z no i think i will not do it okay no but give me more why no not because this is an interview and no is the right answer for this hey i know it it's not like a one on one question where it's a yes or no right no but i know these and in fact the problems you must itself be able to lead it i'll tell no but i know my boss would be able to tell it so this is how i will handle it but if i do anything other than this i'll not be able to sleep well at night i am thinking about the guy i know i'm not what am i going to go home and tell my father if my father asks hey should i buy this i'll obviously tell him no but then just because i don't know the face of a person can i just build it up these are all the questions that would come in my mind you can just tell no and then you know substantiate it left right and center either so, like the personal pitch or the rational pitch both ways yeah personal pitch is how will i face myself how will i face the people i'll i'll feel like i've let down myself my community community of investors not your community it's a community uh, uh, or you say hey this is a reputation risk sitting here i can do it once and then you're dead nobody else is going to keep subscribing to you if you keep peddling rubbish companies so you can make that argument either way either the rational business argument or the conscientious uh, personal argument either way but it has to be substantiated it has to be meaty yeah and on 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 this at least i thought the the, the, the i think ashutosh and uh, sanjeev he went on the track of hey, this, i got to do what i got to do but then, then you have to then you're taking a risk here yeah. she's saying it's going to we're going to add scenario after scenario i'm saying look, you should do what you got to do we're, we're, i thought this would be about secondary complications all of you would say look you're not doing this and how can you not do this is your company your boss is telling you to do and then we'll nudge and prod one of you to say maybe if that's the case then we'll change it but both of you jumped in and said look i am writing a report that's my job but you're not that your job your job is to write a report that depicts reality and you're being told don't do that write a report which peddles the stock uh so 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 even when you are defending or when you are clarifying and you saying buyer beware uh comes out as little cruel and you are you are absolving yourself of the kind of fiduciary responsibility of being a an underwriter lots of auditing come to this look i audited nothing seemed wrong but then they have done some fraud no no things things start fraudulent you were an auditor you are accountable for the fact that this thing went out as an underwriter you are accountable a report and it gets subscribed then you and if if you didn't know the facts in fact prior to writing the report then you are a very bad analyst if you knew there a fraud analyst it's it's your job it's your duty to communicate risk in the investment that means you can't write it's not your duty to write a report so be very clear about about that you have to say this can't go this can't go you can't say i'll write the report as i want to say and then fill it with disclaimers You can't fill it with disclaimers, and so be very careful about uh, about, about what you're saying. 
but it would, i thought this was a much better discussion than the previous yeah i think i'll just add one more point in your ga2 right uh, when you go for it it is not in this case just think about in your mind that you are going to make only points two times because it's not like it is going to keep coming at you there are going to be seven or six people minimum in the ga there might be more also uh, right when they ask a question like this it's not at all important to jump in quickly or anything frame the point very well in your mind your point should be in such a way that it either turns the discussion or it brings in more layers to the discussion you should be what are they trying to understand is obviously the moral and ethical and you know the attitudinal fit the second is hey when i place this person in a classroom is he going to add some value to the classroom so you need people who constantly keep talking obviously are not interesting so the thing is you need to come with very good points a couple of good points is enough and like do not take half hearted attempts at all in this it's it's like either one free ball will come you have to hit a six that's all just wait for that moment when somebody either tells something really random you can come in or when everybody is talking the same thing and you feel there is enough strength in the opposing point of view you can come in you need to talk once or twice max that's all and when you talk the twice the points should be solid there should be depth and it should be in such a manner that they cannot catch you you know with some twist or where you know two layers of depth below you you are uh, busted it should not be that way so take time build up the point and then answer till then i am very sure unprepared people will come there and in a fit of anxiety there will be a couple of people who keep on talking the same points in the interview but because it's a group interview all that is precious time for you to build up your argument very well so take a good stand build a nice argument substantiate it with you know proper facts talk only twice i am telling you talking twice you will know when you make an impact everybody will be quiet talk for that one minute and move on life is that you will get through in ga2 i can punch when you are when you get a chance don't be over anxious to keep talking Uh, and don't don't hang back too much this is kind of like a group discussion thing this is round two so you need to find your moments to say something sensible uh, articulate it well in your head before you jump it not so that you're not cooking up on the fly uh, practice think about these things i think some of the things that went rather well you're all articulate you're very clear you're very courteous uh, you're not nasty you didn't say a word against a fellow interviewee uh, you were able to explain what you were about clearly when there's pushback you're hanging in there and a couple of times you change your opinion because hey i didn't think about this i think i'm changing my opinion that's fine changing your opinion is not a crime so we're not stubbornly defending something that that's that slipped away from you which is good good recovery uh when asked about a specific thing you're able to to, to push back and carry the debate or to 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 accept the point and and move on to the next thing all of those are massive steps so the, the the fact that you're able to say no 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 i don't think so i don't agree with it that is good the fact that you're able to say uh, point taken i hadn't thought about this now that you mentioned this i think that that little bit on sanjeev uh, it, it looked like a change of opinion uh, but when you're doing that i want you to articulate with very specific things this one element that you're saying i had not thought about it at all that completely changes the dynamic for me because of this i think i would also go down the other route i had understood it like this but now that you mentioned it like this i'm completely with you we should not be doing this so you can't say it can't look like so is my problem and so i went jata it has to look like okay this issue i hadn't thought about it you're bringing it to my notice i see it's a valid point i'm i'm changing my view so you have to clearly say this one thing brought me over from the side to that side i'm very happy that i made that change that's good if you can exactly articulate the one thing that you had missed that been brought to your notice that made you change your opinion you now we are rather happy with it you're in so but it has to be specific it can't be like pata nahi lag raha hai this side one fly but i'll let me shift over to that side so it can't be like that so it has to be one specific you can change your opinion you're entitled to you must change your opinion if the facts are is something somebody's point it don't no point change it that's all right it's completely fine that's so that's what discussions are supposed to be like that's completely fine and if somebody comes and tells you so you change your opinion like i change my opinion 
ஜெனரலிங் give every minute to interview preparation interviews the one thing that you can do just with preparation because cat and all has some elements of luck that day how do you feel and stuff like that this has no such element if you prepare tell me about yourself 25 times why mba why the specialization they will definitely ask you can tell the answer so please practice enough number of times if you are serious about it and if you practice you there is very high likely chance that you can easily clear ga1 just preparation will get you through ga1 ga2 just you have to be present there and make couple of points very simple nothing to complicate but you have to do the practice if you go do without practice somebody else who has practiced will get it that's all that's what i have seen it's super gameable super gameable i think that the, with those uh... Uh, with that we will sign off for the day uh, once again many many thanks for uh, chiming in and, and saying look right, let me have a go at it many thanks for that uh, best wishes for all four of you we hope you uh, do fantastically well uh, uh, keep plugging away prepare preparation pays off massively in interviews i must tell you this is someone who did prepare well for his own interviews the relevant ones uh, so it, it massively pays off doing multiple rounds of the same thing saying that so that you own the words super use to prepare well long and hard best wishes uh look forward to seeing you guys in, in personal interviews thank you thank, thank you. you thank you so much okay. over to you chatin should i just stop this Cool. Maybe I'll just drop off Rajesh.